After a fire destroyed our Leopard 50 catamaran, a spontaneous trip to the Annapolis Boat Show interrupted our flow of videos. So now we're going back and filling in the gaps in our story as we sail our McGregor 26 along the east coast of Australia. So in this episode, find out how we handle going from a luxury 50 foot catamaran to a liveaboard McGregor 26. After enjoying perfect conditions in Brampton Island and the Whitsundays, we had to tow the McGregor 26 behind our car 840 kilometres down to the Sunshine Coast where we launched in Noosa. This is a really beautiful area with fantastic natural resources and exclusive properties. So we just splashed the boat last night and who do we have here? Hi folks, we are in Noosaville on Noosa River and um, this is our mode of transport and our accommodation. Right here. This is... Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's a little overcast today, but um, it's probably going to fine up during the day. It's only early yet. We've had breakfast across the road and we had a really good night's sleep last night. So we can just step off the back of the boat and go and have breakfast 30 yards away. Lovely. Yeah. One of the really nice things about um, a lot of the Australian parks is that here we are on the water at Noosa and they provide barbecues for free you just press the button so two barbecues here and seating chairs very smart looking public amenities they even have lights on the ground how cool is that so this place is lit up at night time so you can see your way back to the boat <laughs> after you had a few little refreshing ales <laughs> yes. Across the road. typically these launching ramps and their car park associated are completely free to use and we left our car here for three weeks with the trailer at completely no cost obviously the anchoring offshore and to the beach is also completely free so here we are living in an exclusively high value area at no cost to ourselves just luxury. And it's got right on the water's edge. So it's all very nice. Sun's coming out, which is really nice. Look at the blue sky finally. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> Our 26 McGregor. leave this hatch in for privacy from uh, walker by walker walking by people come on in i'll put the kettle on quick tour of the boat um, this is coming down through the through the hatch we have the saloon on the starboard side we have the galley on the port side fridge, freezer, sliding unit here, pressurized water, only cold on this boat, storage under, storage under, seat up front, storage under there, V-berth up the front, very standard V-berth, we store all of our stuff up there, porta potty on this side, with a door that does close if you wanted to, we've never used that. There you can see the galley and the fridge. We put our cooker on the top of that unit. Underneath the nav gear is valuable shelf. And then underneath that is our queen size berth, which we is the one we use in preference. So that's all good. Just for fun, I've put the Leopard 50 and the McGregor 26 plan side by side. The McGregor 26 actually 
provides us less space than we had in the owner's cabin alone. So quite a change in comfort levels. Beautiful, it's a beautiful day. So where are we? We're in Noosa River, on Noosa River. And we're headed upstream to a place called? Lake Koroiba, and then through Lake Koroiba to a second lake called Kutharaba. Yes, so and it's beautiful. I mean, who wouldn't want to be out here today? So it reminds me of France, cruising along the canals and the rivers, and you've got lots of things to see, and it's flat calm, and there's lots of activity. So this is where a lot of boats anchor. The depths here are about one or two meters. There's a few sandbanks where it gets shallower too because of a typical river. But it's really flat and peaceful except when the wind blows straight down the river. In case you get a bit of swell, but that doesn't happen too often by the sounds of things. We're about a mile from the sea, from the bar at the sea, and the bar is also pretty shallow, quite difficult to enter. which is a very popular foreshore area lots of um, restaurants coffee shops bars that sort of thing um, lots of picnic areas where we were earlier on we were anchored to the beach there which was lovely and there's moorings um, obviously moorings over this side of the river and some on that side but um, this is really where the main center of the waterfront area is and up ahead of us is a marina as well where you can proper marina there are others are just kind of some pontoons with no power etc so and no protection from the wind as well see what this guy's doing just go straight honey just go straight don't change direction you see he's in a little boat eh? ah! This is the, the Yacht and Rowing Club, because I think they do a lot of rowing up and down this river too, but it's quite nice, good bar food, stuff like that. But again, the, the boats that they have are all private, you can't berth there as a, as a visitor. So we're starting to get into the less habited areas, or areas just going out of town now, which is be nice. Over here we've got really nice houses on the waterfront. These houses are worth millions, they tell us, millions. Four, five, ten, depending on the size. Yeah, that's where the affluent people live. Beautiful people. Beautiful people. <laughs> Look at this big motorboat powering along at full speed, creating horrible wake for absolutely everybody, including all these boats and the little jetties alongside. No manners. On the phone. and the back of the of the ferry and they drop the cables when they go into anchor so you can only cross when the ferry stopped and not when it's about to go so after it crosses they drop the cables and apparently although I'm not that convinced if you see you can still see the cables there
look at all these beautiful houses along here. They're lovely pontoons. The river's a lot wider than it looks like on the chart. Yeah. On the chart it looked like it was really narrow, but this is actually quite comfy. confused with boring point. Unmarked. You go first! <laughs> I'm not sure whether I'm just seeing red. Or it is actually really shallow. up some mud. Oh really shallow, I reckon only a couple of feet hunt. Oh really shallow. Can you give us some reverse hunt? Pretty shallow. Hi! Lovely spot. You, yeah, <laughs> it's pretty shallow. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh. Or maybe not. Serves <laughs> <So> me right. <laughs> All right, Gone come on. <laughs> come on, get in the water and pull this boat closer to shore. Yes, boss. <laughs> She makes me do! <laughs> it's not fair! She's so cool! I think you need to go further back in the boat, huh? Whole 50 kilos! Oh, oh. god! <laughs> <laughs> Be, well, I have a feeling that we're touching the bottom there. Yeah, I think we're kind of rotating a bit, aren't we? Yeah, I think that's it, huh? I think that's it. So we've got to have five times the depth. So if it's one foot deep, we need five feet of chain. <laughs> You have reached your destination.
So we're out for a sail this morning and we're on Lake Kutaraba. <laughs> Lake Kutaraba. Try saying that after you've had a couple of drinks. <laughs> anyway, here we are and we have the main up and sailing along. It's pretty shallow. It's very shallow. So it makes it pretty tricky to sail around here, even though this is supposed to be good for sailing. Well, they, they, race, they race dinghies, yes, because it's, it's very, it's a big lake and it's shallow water. But of course, dinghies don't take much, don't need much depth. So I think what they do is they race in the areas where they've got enough depth, but we don't know where the, the mud banks are. So we've kind of bottomed out a few times. Mm. And so the, the dagger board's only halfway down. So um, we're sliding sideways a little bit when we're trying to go upwind, but still it's very calm and very flat and lovely. Hmm. Here's the mainsail. We're just going around in circles so we don't have to work hard. So that's my brother Pete. because um, we reckon his dagger board uh, was cutting through or going along in the mud, raising up a big mud trail. So we reckon he was being slowed down by the, by the dagger board in the mud. Mm. We're gonna head around the other side of the point there because there's a little village behind there and it might be sheltered from the wind for today. It's us. Elizabeth is down there in the galley making afternoon tea and pikelets. Woohoo! We look forward to that very much. What, we couldn't afford a decent whip? No. It's a <laughs> have liked this episode hit the like button subscribe for free and ding the dong so you don't miss your fix of the next exciting episode love and health from the barefoot doctors